okay. Uh, okay. Sean, let's talk about natural therapies for seasonal affective disorder, part two. Okay. Before I go any further, I want to cover a few things that I think that can be um, serious, cause some serious problems. Number one, if somebody has a problem with depression and natural therapies are not working and they need to see somebody professional, I urge that you do that because sad, even though your depression may be worse this time of year, it can affect, you know, depression. It is a form of depression and it can, and you might need to see somebody professional. Another thing is I caution people on the use of artificial vitamin D. It um, can cause problems with the intestines. It can cause problems with the gallbladder and kidneys. So be careful with it. You know, I got some vitamin D and I read that mm -hmm. and I haven't used any of it for that reason. Okay. Now, natural therapies, um, getting natural vitamin D in the sunlight, that's another thing I want to caution you with is, you know, like pers especially myself, it's not burning. In, you know, even this time of year you can get a burn. And so to be careful. Um, one doctor recommends starting out one minute in the sun and each day building up one minute by adding one minute each day that you're getting uh, out into the sun. So I want you to be careful with that. But that is the best source of vitamin D. Calcium, you also need calcium with vitamin D in order to affect that uh, therapy with the calcium. Calcium also works better with silica. There are some natural uh, forms of silica like horsetail that uh, actually help the calcium work better. They've done uh, some tests in some of the hospitals with people with broken bones and that, and the people that did the best healing of broken bones did not do it with calcium. They actually had lower calcium, but they had higher silica and vitamin D in their bodies, and so they did heal faster. Another thing I want to talk about is this time of year, especially the holidays, it can be not only because of the lack of light, but because of these holidays, it's a sad time of year. More things happen to people because of uh, people that are overindulging on the holidays, getting into accidents, a lot of loved ones are lost to um, car wrecks, things like that. Um, so just memories of these sad experiences and that, and some of the craziness that goes on with the holidays can be and affect your mood also. So if you have a problem, talk to somebody about it. You know, somebody professional if you really need to go that far. Uh, there are all kinds of agencies that have uh, different scales and things like that in helping people. Um, another thing is that uh, a lot of people don't have the money that they think they need to buy Christmas gifts and stuff like that, that can cause people to be sad. So, especially when they have children and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think what what I'll do when I'm, when I'm finishing up the processing of this, I'll include that material that I told you about on SAD for, with the symptoms mm -hmm. um, from the Mayo Clinic, if it's okay with you. Oh, sure. In the no description. Problem. No problem. And, uh, you know. Okay. That's good to. And what else did I want to cover? <laughs> uh, so. Well, now last week um, we said really quickly at the end that the number one herb that you would recommend is um, St. John's wort. Right. Correct. Right. Um, and many many uh, psychiatrists are now um, prescribing that for people that don't have severe depression, but just have a seasonal depression like now. Yeah, but it takes usually two or three weeks before it actually kicks in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it does help. I've used it myself and it did work, you know. What about, I read somewhere a few years ago that evening primrose oil mm -hmm. might be good. Would you yeah. recommend that too? Oh, yes, yes, you know. Okay. And, you know, get eat a, eating vegetables that have some calcium and some vitamin D in it too. 
you know, and f different fruits, especially citrus is good. Citrus is uh, um, just coming into season right now. Uh, and they're start, they probably just started to pick it in the last couple of weeks for the, and it's always good at this time of the year. Okay. Um, another thing that we were talking about earlier was doing some kind of activity like Tai Chi mm -hmm. or um, yoga. Tai Chi, I do myself, and I invite anybody that wants to get together and do some Tai Chi to let me know. Uh, my va basement might be available for a few people and stuff like that. I have uh, tapes and uh, and recordings of three different styles. I've mm -hmm. done three different styles myself, so um, it can be good. It's good for the joints. It's good for the it's a meditation type thing mm -hmm. and um, actually and helps nerve pathways heal themselves, stuff like that. Uh, another thing that you um, posted today is about meditation. Meditation is great for all kinds of things and depression mm -hmm. and getting yeah. into your right mind, you know. Yes, yes. Um, I always have trouble. Uh, I did Al Anon for many years in adult children of alcoholics groups. And one of the things we always talked about was getting in your right mind, getting balanced, um, putting things where they belong in the perspective, you know, mm -hmm. things in the past that are bothering you. Yes, they were important. Our past is important to us, but put them in proper perspective. That can help depression. I um, was listening to a program a couple of weeks ago where a doctor was talking about meditation and said that um, the, the process of meditation relaxed uh, a nerve connected to the central nervous system mm -hmm. that, and that nerve being relaxed actually um, affected people's relations with other people. Yes. yes. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I, you know, I, uh, I really follow meditation mm -hmm. practice a lot. And uh, in the Tai Chi, and I'm sure they do it in yoga too, they talk about the Dantian area, which is just below the navel, mm -hmm. the center of your gravity in that point, and all, everything comes from that point. And uh, some people talk about the chakras, well that's one of the major chakras in meditation and stuff, you know, so getting into that nerve mm -hmm. and settling that nerve and centering in that nerve can bring all kinds of healing and energy. Um, one other thing I want to mention before we get too far, before this is over, is that, you know, just taking a walk, get bundled up and take a walk in a park. Yeah, you and know? it's that it's that kind of mindful activity, mm -hmm. too. Right. And you can, I mean, I can meditate by walking, you mm -hmm. know, just on the nature and listening to the, to the creek and stuff like that, the waterfalls. I've got some, there's some waterfalls close to my house, you know, at yeah. Mill Creek Park and stuff that helps. Yes, exactly. And that, I heard too that um, all those meditative practices um, basically focus on mindfulness and I think mindfulness right. might you know might be the key here especially with sad mm -hmm. right but all these things together you know find something find something that works do something you know that's one of the things I found you know is just doing something that you know that was enjoyable or calming always helped me okay know? Sitting okay. in front of a TV or sitting there thinking about stuff, you know, I call it uh, stinking thinking a lot of times, you know. Yes, exactly. It just doesn't work. It just makes things worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we are out of time for this video, so okay. thank you very much. Thank and you. we will do another segment next week. Okay, good.